Live! Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live AMA where we answer your reverse engineering questions. If you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. Lots more reverse engineering content there. With that, let's get into it. Okay, so uh, this is a, uh, I think this actually applies to almost everyone here. Um, and it comes back to, uh, you know, how you get, how you got started and, uh, you know, how did you get into reverse engineering? But, uh, I mean, this question was directed to me, but I know a few of you started as software developers. So, uh, what, why did you switch from software development into reverse engineering? Like, what is, what is the reason behind that? Um, I can, I can say mine is very straightforward and very simple. And it's just that I'm perpetually curious. I'm just so curious. And I wanted to know more about how things work. Um, it's, that's it. That's the, there's nothing else really behind it. It's just that I wanted to know how things work. But, uh, I think it's a good question, especially, I think maybe for Jordan. Um, I know, I know you weren't like technically like, I don't know if you were a full-time, you weren't a full-time developer, right? You said you were kind of learning on the side. I, or... Iron, I did the back, I did the opposite, ironically. So I was a network security engineer, right? I wasn't doing development. Oh. I was doing like, you know, security stuff. I was a very bad developer and I started playing CTFs. I started, so I, I learned reverse engineering before I learned development and that oh. made me waste a lot of time. I, and so that's why I always tell people <laughs> to like learn coding first. Like I understood the basics of it, but I, I didn't, I was not a good developer. That's so why I'm still not like, you know, like I said, working on the core features of Binja because like I'm good with Python. I'm good with, you know, basics and stuff, but um, yeah, it's a very different skill set to be very good at like, building especially like larger programs too like there's there's like different skill sets and somebody who can build like a hundred line script versus a thousand versus ten thousand and like an architect it well i think that's a different different uh different kind of stuff so yeah i did it weird josh were you a developer first no so i actually was in quality assurance um well because i was into hacking stuff right so then i joined like a web app company doing qa and then found a bunch of security volumes and stuff and then I actually ended up joining a bigger company that got acquired by an even bigger company that was in, uh, ended up being an EDR and I did quality assurance for them. And then because, um, I was looking at malware all the time, I ended up pivoting into malware analysis from there. So, but same with Jordan, like going from being a non-developer to doing reverse engineering is very difficult just because you don't understand like basic programming concepts. So I, definitely advise everybody to take the path of doing more development first because yeah you waste a lot of time just being like oh this is a basic programming concept but uh, is that, yeah. I, I wouldn't really say i was i was uh, a developer ever really i mean i was interested in writing code and i was interested in doing it in a way as developers would do it so i'm interested in writing code in a reasonable way like in software engineering techniques and i have um many friends who are really good at it my, my partner is a software engineer um but i was never really a software engineer myself i just always had to write code to get stuff done that i wanted to do on the computer um very early on it was writing malware then it was writing other stuff and then eventually i was a mathematician and believe it or not as a mathematician you all want to write a shit ton of code depending on what field you're in in some fields you don't but in my case you do and the like the i became a reverse engineer not really like it was more like i wanted to get out of academia so it was not a conscious choice to like like oh i want to be a reverse engineer it was like oh i finally want to do something with computers again like i want to be close to the machine again and and then this was just a great way to do it and it turned out later that it was fantastic for me so <clears throat> but i know at least two people who went from software engineer to um being a reverse engineer and in one case it was there's probably no real reason other than that it was just a better career opportunity like just mm. they had a they had a position as a software engineer and then the 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 entire package of the reverse engineering position was better and in the other case, um, the person had been a low level, low level developer for a while and they started playing CTFs and they, through that way, they got really interested in security and they were like, oh, wow, reverse engineering. That is something that 
could be like where I could combine my hobby and my my skills. Yeah, I also didn't start as a software developer. I was a kindergarten teacher first. So <laughs> for real? Uh, for real? Uh, nice. Amazing. I love it. Yeah, but it was actually not the. It was a weird mixture of being overwhelmed from having people all around me all day because I'm an introvert and because I. I'm good at focused work, but I'm not good at, at um, dividing my attention. So this was overwhelming for me. And at the same time, it was also not challenging for me. Like it was like a weird mixture of being like, it's, it's not enough and it's also too much. So I changed my career path then entirely and I studied computer science after that oh, so, so how did you do that did you, yeah did you go back to school did you like what was yes. that what did that transition look like yes i i had to do my um abitur but certain english like college they don't degree. have it hi it's, yeah and like it's it's the high it's finishing high school but that's really not like it doesn't really translate it's not really, it is yeah. a degree you get in germany that qualifies you for higher education yeah so i had to do that first and then study yeah and then I, right after, um, I, I already wrote my master thesis about malware. So that's also around the time where I got interested in it. And I, right after university, I was uh, employed at GData as a malware analyst. So that's very cool. That's well, so like I actually like it. Biggest... It's kind of random, but I, I like people who have career paths that are not just, I went to CS and I did this stuff, but like people who have, like one of the best reversals I know was a physicist like PhD physicist um, who then like as a side thing was like decapping chips to reverse them and like scanning them with like his labs electron scanning microscope and then writing machine lenses like 12, 15 years ago and then actually using like a neural net to like decode the images to turn it back into a firm like for fun and he actually turned it into this like his PhD physics thesis like and it was just because he was doing a bunch of different stuff so I, I think the best people often have like more breadth of experience. So that wraps it up. Big thanks to our panel of experts. You can go check out their socials here. Thank you very much. And if you guys want to see more reverse engineering content like this, in-depth tutorials, live streams, your questions answered, go check out our Patreon. Lots more stuff like that there. And stay tuned for the next question.